people celebrate the 4th of July, but here on Stuff Mom Never Told You, I celebrate the 6th of July because it's National Kissing Day. And to celebrate, I'm gonna answer the question of why women wear lipstick. Because kissing and lipstick go together like the 4th of July and fireworks, hot dogs and buns, popsicles and brain freezes, like kissing and an increased risk of contracting oral herpes. <laughs> To answer the question of why women wear lipstick, we must go way, 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 way back in time, approximately, to 3500 BC, to ancient Mesopotamia, which is modern day Middle East. And that's where we find the first recorded history of women and men wearing lipstick. That's right, when people first started wearing lipstick, it was more of a signifier of social status and wealth. My red lips should communicate to you that I have a robust 401k, I wish. So in ancient Mesopotamia, royals and aristocrats would wear compounds made out of things like red clay, henna, seaweed, iodine, and this very toxic compound called bromine mean manite and some linguists think that that is where the phrase kiss of death originated because these early lipsticks that we would slather all over our lips were really really toxic in fact it wasn't until the 1930s that more regulations started cracking down on lipsticks to make sure that we weren't putting things like lead all over our lips moving ahead in time and South a little bit into Northern Africa. We come to one of history's most iconic women, Cleopatra VII was known for the lipstick that she would wear, sometimes a combination of this red dye called carmine and crushed up beetles and crushed up ants. Hello, Julius Caesar. Kiss my lips, there are crushed up and guts all over them. Your voice is the most annoying I've ever heard, but I will kiss your alluring lips anyway. If we go to ancient Greece, we start to get into more of a gendered territory of lipstick because that is the first time that we start seeing it really associated with female prostitutes. Let's take a giant leap now from ancient Greece over to the Middle Ages, come along. This is when stuff starts to get really weird about lipstick and women. Because by this point in the Middle Ages, men are not wearing lipstick. We have moved also solidly into Europe and the whole status thing has flip-flopped from it being a high status signifier to a low status female signifier because of all of the weird moralizing thanks to the capital C church it was said and I quote that women who wear lipstick were the incarnation of Satan. Minutes Maybelline. Now there is one bright spot for lipstick in the mid 16th century with the reign of Elizabeth the first. As is well known, Elizabeth I sported that look of very pale skin and very bold lips. Her secret ingredients were crushed up flowers. Isn't that the sweetest thing you ever heard? Now there was a superstitious element to Queen Elizabeth's obsession with lipstick though. It was this holdover from medieval times which maintained that lipstick and cosmetics in general could ward off illness and death. And so as she aged and was on her deathbed, it was said that Elizabeth would wear up to half an inch of lipstick in the hopes of keeping the old Grim Reaper at bay. But even as awesome as Queen Elizabeth was, her legacy was not powerful enough to cut those ties between the idea that lipstick was a sign of a very wayward woman. In 1770, Parliament passed a law saying that it was totally okay to call off a wedding or even annul a marriage if it was found out that a bride had worn cosmetics before she became a wife. But there was a bit of a backlash to all of this moralizing against women wearing lipstick. And this would come in the 1890s and early 1900s with the suffrage movement. Susan B. Anthony and her gender equality loving compatriots would 
actually wear red lipstick to suffrage rallies on purpose as a sign of their rebellion against the status quo. Read my lips. I would like to vote. Seriously, I'm a woman. I would like, could I, could I please vote? And then in 1890, also as a sign that lipstick was entering the mainstream consumer culture, Sears and Roebuck began selling it in its catalog for the very first time. And then once we get into the 20th century with, say, the flapper who was known for wearing dark red rouge when she would go out drinking bathtub gin at speakeasies and such, also the rise of movie culture where younger girls would see these starlets on screen who were wearing lipsticks, slowly but surely lipstick lost its tawdry reputation and became just a staple that 98% of women by 1950 would keep in their purse. Sales of lipstick for women are so consistent that when the economic recession happened in 2008, the sales of lipstick actually went up which led some economists to refer to it as the lipstick indicator, meaning that women were buying these small luxuries like lipsticks because we couldn't afford to buy larger things like say a new purse or a pair of shoes or even a dress. So the idea is if lipstick sales are going up, then it might mean that the economy is going down. Plenty of other economists who say that the lipstick indicator, kind of like the hemline index, are totally bunk. But it's really fascinating to think about, especially when you consider the fact that these are 21st century economists considering the real world implications of a tube of this, which goes all the way back to 3500 BC. But one question that I have not answered yet is what's up with the endurance of red as the staple lip color. Now the more PG answer is younger women's lips tend to be rosier, so we wear red lipstick to emulate feminine youth and vitality. The more PG-13 answer that Freudian psychologists would probably agree with is that we make our lips bright red to subtly remind men of vaginas. So while I get so excited about the rebellious act of wearing lipstick, then I think about the fact that I'm just painting a vagina on my face and <laughs> I'm back at square one. But I hope this answers your questions about lipstick. Viewers, I want to know, do you wear lipstick regularly? Guys, do you like women and lipstick. So happy National Kissing Day. Kiss someone you love consensually.